This tutorial is going to delve into the process of conversion or replacement of title issued from a closed register. The process entails migrating all parcels of land from the repeat land registration statutes, for instance Registration of Titles Act, Government Land Act and Registration of Land Act to a unitary regime under the Land Registration Act of 2012. The titles issued under the repeal statutes will be cancelled and replaced with titles under the new regime. Upon the gazettement of a parcel of land that is eligible for conversion, the proprietor of said parcel is given a 90-day time period to air his or her grievances, if any, after which the ministry will call upon the parcel owner to initiate the surrender process by filling the digitized form LRA 97. The current physical ownership document will be submitted after the application is made. After successful conversion, a ticket shall be raised to the client who will then be expected to collect his or her converted title document. For more information on ticketing and what it entails, kindly view our tutorial on the same through the link featured in the video description. This process is initiated by an advocate, one who is registered on the platform and has upgraded the account. To begin with, you log into the platform, key in your Alsasa ID or national ID number, enter your password and then click continue. Upon doing so, you will be provided with a one-time password code, an OTP, which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click Login. You'll be navigated to the dashboard. On your dashboard, you'll find a number of services listed under the several departments we have in the Ministry of Lands and Physical Planning. As an advocate, when you first log in, the account you're logged in is your private account. For you to initiate this process, you'll need to switch to your Advocate account. So you do so by clicking on the profile icon. It will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as an Advocate. Switch to your Advocate account and you'll be able to proceed with the process. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, check out our YouTube video through the link in the video description. The process we are undertaking is under Land Registration. So navigate to the Land Registration and click View More and you'll find the application listed under the services offered in this department. Upon clicking on it, you'll be navigated to the Applications page, and under the Applications page, there are a number of tabs provided. We have five tabs, namely, Pending, Ongoing, Completed, Rejected, and Cancelled. All the applications that you have initiated as an advocate will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the level of your application. The pending tab is for the application that you have initiated as an advocate but have not completed it or they still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have submitted as an advocate but it's up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to process the application. The completed tab is for applications which have been approved by the relevant ministry officials. The rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. The reasons will be communicated to you on the application. The Cancel tab is for applications which have been cancelled by the different parties involved in the application process. For you to initiate a replacement of title application as an advocate, you'll click on the New Application tab on the top right hand corner. You'll then be navigated to a page with FAQs which is the frequently asked questions related to this process. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to get some of the terminologies used. When you are satisfied with the FAQs, you can proceed and click Next. You'll then be navigated to the Proprietorship Details section. Under this section, you'll first be required to provide the old parcel number, and then the new parcel number in the specified format, registry, forward slash, block, and then the block number with no space in between, forward slash, the parcel number. You can check and confirm your new parcel number on the Gazette notice. Kindly note that the old parcel number will be the old LR or IR number. For example, if your LR number is LR12345 forward slash 0098, just key in the number without the LR prefix. You'll then move on to ownership type where you'll need to choose the holding type for the proprietors which can either be sole proprietorship joint proprietorship or proprietorship in common. For joint proprietorship, 
you will be required to provide all the RDSSA ID of all the proprietors and as for proprietors in common, you will not only be required to provide the RDSSA IDs of the proprietors but also the shareholding on the property. In this case, we will proceed with the sole proprietorship option and thus we will key in the RDSSA ID of the proprietor and then click on search. A pop-up box will appear and it will require you to indicate the ownership rights of the proprietor that you have selected. The ownership rights listed include proprietor, trustee, trustee in bankruptcy, administrator, and liquidator. In this case, we'll choose the proprietor option and then click the add button. You'll then be required to indicate the person to execute as the proprietor, which could either be the person executing on his or her own behalf, or an attorney executing on behalf of the proprietor. If it is an attorney executing on behalf of a proprietor, you'll select the attorney option then you will be required to provide power of attorney entry number. So kindly key in, in the format registry, forward slash, the entry number, forward slash, the month of registration, forward slash, the year of registration, and then click search. Once you search, the name of the attorney will appear underneath the search bar along with the RDSSA ID of the attorney. If there is more than one attorney acting or executing on behalf of the proprietor, you can key in the power of attorney entry number of the second attorney in the same format and then click on search. The name of the second attorney will also appear underneath the search bar along with the RDSSA ID. If the RDSSA ID does not appear, it means the attorney is transacting for the first time. As such, you'll be required to input the RDSSA ID of the second attorney. However, in this case, we'll proceed with the self option which means the proprietor is executing on his or her own behalf and then click on the save button and the proprietor as well as the person executing on behalf of the proprietor will be listed. You'll also be required to provide the details of the pickup person. There is this field where you'll need to input the RDSSA ID of the pickup person hence he or she should have already provided you with his or her RDSSA ID at this point. Kindly input the required RDSSA ID and then click on search and the name of the pickup person as well as his or her RDSSA ID will be listed. This is the person who will pick the new title once it is ready for pickup. If you are satisfied with the details you have provided in this section, you can go ahead and click on next. You will be navigated to the law firm details page where you, the advocate, will need to provide the details of the law firm that you are acting for. You will provide the name of the law firm, the phone number, the physical address, the email address, the postal address of the law firm. As far as the website and the street address of the law firm are concerned, they are not mandatory fields to fill. However, you can provide the details where applicable. You also have an option of adding the law firm by either the RDSSA ID, which will populate the required fields for the firm. If any of the required fields are not populated, you will need to type in the details. You can then go ahead and click on Next and you'll be navigated to the documents page where you'll need to upload a copy of the current title. So go ahead and click on the choose file button and you'll be navigated to your local machine or device whereby you'll upload the documents you have prepared and the documents will be listed against the choose file button. If you have additional documents which you feel will support this process, you have the option of providing those documents. If you're satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate the application process, you can proceed and click on next. The last step is the confirmation step with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details you have provided. If satisfied with the details you have provided, you can click on submit. You also have an option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click yes. You'll then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been created successfully. You'll be navigated to the applications page where you'll see your application listed. Click on the view button to open your application. We have the execution section where you'll need to accept whether or not to represent the parties listed. So if you as an advocate are representing all parties involved, you'll click on accept. And if you do not represent one or all of the parties involved, you'll click on reject and the parties involved will get a notification that you are not representing them and they will have an option of selecting or adding another advocate to represent them. Additionally, you will be required to append your signature as the advocate. There are a number of options on how to append your signature. To begin with, there is this signing area here, as you can see, which allows you to sign with your computer mouse if you are using a desktop or a laptop, 
and alternatively with a stylus pen or your index finger if you are using a phone or tablet to access the platform. You also have the other option of signing with another device. When you click on this option, a pop-up box will appear displaying four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing options on RD Sasa, kindly view our YouTube video explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. In this case, we'll proceed with the option of signing on the provided signing area and then click on the save button. Once you submit this application as an advocate, a ticket and an invite will automatically be created by the system. This is to enable you to surrender the title. As you can see, you have been requested to kindly submit your current title. So go ahead and navigate to the My Appointments tab on the left panel of your screen and you'll see an invite that has been created. Click on View and you'll be able to book the appointment on the calendar to your right. Select the date that you'd like to surrender the title and also select the time and then click on the Submit button. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to confirm whether you want to set the appointment and then click on Yes. The invitation will then transition to the upcoming appointments tab Click on the view button and you'll be able to generate a gate pass which you'll present at the gate as you surrender the title. For more information on ticketing and appointments in general, click the featured link in the video description to view our tutorial on it. You also have the option of rescheduling. If the date you previously selected is not convenient to you, you can choose the new date and time and then click on reschedule. Kindly note that the proprietor or proprietors involved will be required to verify this process by appending their signature. As such, it is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the parties involved throughout the verification process for ease of operations. Once the proprietor has logged in, he or she will navigate to the notification tab on the left panel of the screen and select the notification related to that application. As a proprietor, you have the option to change or add an advocate if the initial advocate is not representing you. If satisfied with the information listed, you can go ahead and append your signature on the signing area provided, and then click on Save. Once all parties have signed and the original title has been surrendered, the application will move to the registration department for processing and approval. Once it has been approved, you will be notified to pick your new title. At the end of the process, your property becomes transactable and will automatically be listed under the My Properties tab on the proprietor's account. That's it for this tutorial on the replacement of title issued from a closed register. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscription button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Thanks for watching and goodbye.